we are live. Welcome to 2022's Werewolf by Night review and thoughts. Happy Spooktober! So, yeah, I am going to start by telling you this. I absolutely loved this. I suppose I'm supposed to call it a TV special. I think, yeah, I guess I'll do that. This video will have some jokes. I'm probably not going to get very serious in this video. And... Let's see. So, I realize this video is long, I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. I start this video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. Also, please note, I will not warn before spoilers for earlier entries in the MCU, and as soon as I end the review itself, the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers. So, let's see, that brings us... There we go. Okay, so... This is rated TV-14. And that makes a lot of sense. The... Um, yeah, it's, it's actually kind of wild how far it really pushes the that rating and the yeah like I am on record as saying it is extremely rare for a PG-13 horror movie to be good like not impossible the American remake of The Ring is PG-13 and very scary but it's more of a psychological horror and in this movie, th this special, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's definitely a psychological element to it, but a lot of the horror is very, yeah, you know, gory and and bloody and such, and yeah, this is, this is the rare PG thirteen equivalent horror that I legitimately do find to be yeah you know as as they push it further it is going to be more yeah you know if you go to the mdb parents guide the violence and gore is rated as severe and frightening and intense scene are rated as moderate so now let's Brings us to and yes, here we go. Since we're still dealing with Corona, I want to say during this video, it is possible I will touch my face. I want to assure you, I washed my hands since the last time I was outside, and I will wash my hands again before going out. And yeah, so I have only watched this once. I just got done watching it before I hit record. And yeah, that brings us to the plot. So the a a group of international monster hunters are gathered when the lead monster hunter is you know when we yeah for his funeral basically but the you know these people don't do anything there are no half measures with with these people so instead of just you know a, a solemn occasion no they're all going to fight each other you know, they're, they're basically, they're allowed to do anything they want to each other, including killing each other. The winner will be the last person standing and or the person who catches the monster that is loose on the, you know, yeah, on the, on the premises. In intentionally, 
let loose at that. So, yeah. And the... That brings us to the writing. So, this was written by, let's see, Heather Quinn, Peter Cameron. Right, yeah, the everything else is created by. And Heather Quinn has written some Hawkeye, and she was a producer for that as well, and Peter Cameron. Yeah, he's, other than this, he's written for Moon Knight, WandaVision, and various other TV projects. So, yeah, and they both do a really, really solid job here. Every character has their own kind of like some of the some of the characters don't even have a lot of screen time but you get a strong sense of who they are you know the the i think every single character here has like they they worked out the the backstory and kind of overall like personality and such even for the ones that really yeah and yeah they're all they're they're all credible and the the movie presents a I'm not gonna say so you know, yeah I've given you the 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 bare bones of the just the, the the setup as you know and you know it would be kind of boring if, if well it wouldn't be boring but it wouldn't be as interesting if there weren't also a few kind of yeah few few twists you know and yeah the the there's a there's a lot of stuff in this that I did not see coming and just yeah the the you know the the core concept by itself if you had no twists if it just played out that would already be really really fun but you know Where's the challenge in that for the the writing team? So, writing duo. So so yeah, the yeah, excellent writing. And that brings us to the yeah. So I already mentioned the plot twists are quite good. There are not too many. And not too few, nor are they easy to figure out. And it doesn't fall apart when you learn the twist. And it's not the kind of thing where you have to, like, check a Wikipedia plot summary to make sure you understood everything. You know, they're, they're surprising, but you can, you can grok them once you learn a surprise. So this was... That, yeah, that brings us to direction. This was directed by Michael Giacchino, whose name probably sounds familiar, but not as the director. So yeah, other than this, like, let's see, he has, he directed, right, yeah, this is listed as a short, not a, a feature film. Other than this, he also directed a short called Monster Challenge in 2018, and... Star Trek's Short Treks TV series short. Yeah. He does a really, really good job. The... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get into... The, I'll, I'll return to that. So, in an interview, he said that the scariest stuff in the old horror movies that he grew up on was sometimes the shadows of things. And you can really tell, like... They they really use shadows extremely well in this, and it really, yeah. Now, let's see the yeah. So, uh, Giacchino 
confirmed he was directing the special in June 2022. Well, an enjoyable but challenging process. And yeah, to quote a few fellow critics, this is gorier than any other MCU project. And yeah, even Netflix, which is why it's black and white, so they could get away with more gore. And Giacchino has actually wanted to direct since childhood. He made f films with his friends back then. And this is clearly made by a director who loves and understands movies. And yeah, something I personally noted, there is some MCU style left, such as the humor, although some of the humor gets very dark. And yeah, like this is basically a horror comedy and it is genuinely both scary and funny, you know, like, I wouldn't quite say, it, it doesn't go quite as far as something like the old Fright Night, which is, you know, that's kind of my my standby go-to kind of you know yeah that one is legitimately both scary and funny it's not quite as scary as that it's not quite the the gore isn't as graphic as that but yeah i would say this made me laugh as hard as as that does uh, you know and yeah just it's it's they really, the the whole, yeah. If you if you haven't watched the trailers, this whole thing, you know, yeah. The the black and white that is one of the stylish stylistic choices. All of the stylistic choices go together. This is basically like, you know, if this movie, uh, if this yeah, if this had been made as a movie in like the 50s or 60s, it would star Vincent Price. You know, it is like one of those classic, you know, I want to say there was a specific Vincent Price movie that I saw this compared to. I am not going to spend forever. I'm just really quickly going to skim his filmography if it will actually open the pit you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna start a second one they can race each other there we go okay so Vincent Price RIP absolutely incredible so let's see the I will know it when I see it I'm certain of it because I know the title of the remake House on Haunted Hill which is where, yeah, I'm just going to read from the IMDb. A millionaire offers 10,000 to five people who agree to be locked in a large, spooky, rented house overnight with him and his wife. And, yeah, that's essentially, that is the, the setup here. You know, they have to stay in this, uh, you know, this one place for, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not 100% sure they say exactly how long, but, you know, eventually someone will get the monster and or have killed all the other monster hunters. So, yeah, you know, that's, it's a, it's a great kind of, I forget what it's called, not a, not a bottle episode, but there's a specific term for you know, when you take a, you, you have a, you basically take one location and you, you know, and, and some characters, like, you can, obviously this is basically going to be, you know, about these, these monster hunters and in this one mansion and that's basically it, you know, so, so it doesn't have the kind, you know, they're not like going from location to location, which actually that might be why this is not an MCU movie because this has way less locations than the MCU movie. You know, I guess they didn't. If you go all the way back to the start, not all of them have, but certainly today, all of them have a lot of locations, and yeah, just yeah, you have this this small group of people in this one location and it's just you know yeah it's just fun to see this play out like 
what exactly is going to happen when you you know these are all like they are really good at killing but they are used to killing monsters not people and yeah they can they can basically do what they what they want it's it's every hunter for themselves and yeah i just it it is very much like a 50s or 60s kind of actually i suppose possibly even further back this you know house on haunted hill was from 59 but you know in some ways it's like yeah so the old mummy which i i guess if yeah if you know that's what you're looking at you can recognize it but otherwise i did in fact put the old mummy there it's it is the only old you know the, the of of the classic monster movies it's the only one i have on dvd but yeah something like that you know so by today's standards very cheesy but just so much fun and just this yeah you know the the it's a it's a very specific kind of it's it's a very specific style and it really nails that it's all all through you know i mean black and white by itself you know that that can there's there's a lot of other stuff that's black and white but the the music the sound design the costuming the set design all of these things are very specifically of that kind of you know so yeah and i personally i haven't myself watched that many of them i i guess the mummy the mummy might be the only really all the way back then of of monster movies that I've yeah yeah and actually I've forgotten this but yeah the mummy is an hour and 13 minutes so maybe that's part of why this is as short as it is which is yeah I'll get into the exact length but it's much shorter than the movies so this this opens with narration ex you know exposition explaining the setup basically and just from right away you you really get what this is and so so yeah i'm not going to give away whether the ending is happy or sad but it fits with what came before i think it is absolutely perfect of a way to end it and it does not require deus ex machina or other convenient writing and it doesn't have a post credit scene or anything else once the cr once the end credits start rolling you know you're you're free to click away or uh, yeah it never lost my interest at at any point now let's, you know and it it gets going very very quickly i have not read the the comics that this is based on so I cannot comment on that aspect. The, let's see. So yeah, the um, yeah, Gail Garcia Bernal stars. I suppose I should not give away the exact. Yeah, he is the star. You will learn his name over the course of, of watching this, but it's not given immediately. Laura Donnelly plays Elsa Bloodstone, who is the, you know, basically the, the guy who... Yeah, the, the... Yeah, the guy whose funeral this is was named Ulysses Bloodstone. And Elsa is his estranged daughter who, uh, suppose I will. yeah, just there's a, there's, there's a specific aspect of her character that, and 
Harriet Sampson Harris plays Verusa Bloodstone, Ulysses' widow, Elsa's stepmother, the leader of a secret group of monster hunters. And let's see. Yeah, the monster hunters include Kirk Thatcher as Jovan, Eugenie Bonjoret as Azrael, Leonardo Nam as Leorn. Al Hamaker as Billy Swan, and Daniel J. Watts as Barrasso. And... Let's see. Yeah, and Richard Dixon voices Ulysses Bloodstone. And... Let's see. Yeah, and, and the opening narration is by Rick Wasserman. Now, yeah, the the characters are, you know, the their actions are are credible, and yeah, like I'd honestly be up for like if they wanted to do a spin-off focusing on any of the major characters in this, yeah. They're, they're all, again, like some of them you don't learn that much about, but there's clearly history. There's clearly something, you know, yeah, the, the, these are not characters who, you know, they're not like insecure, they're not hiding who they are they you know they are they are proud monster hunters and yeah i i really like the, you know they, they come from all the you know so yeah you know one of them's a scotsman i'm not going to assume exactly what what one of them's um yeah what's uh, i guess I'm going to go with East Asian. And Yeah, and the the dialogue is quite good again, like you get a sense of who the various ones are based in part on what they say and how they say it. And So, the cinematography was handled by Zoe White, who was a cinematographer on a bunch of, I suppose I should say, other shorts. 29 shorts in total. And 14, uh, never mind, some of those are music videos, but yeah, uh, let's see. Eight movies, two of which have not come out yet. I have to admit, none. I, I'm not recognizing any of these titles. But yeah, do a great job. There's some really great panning shots that go on for, <clears throat> for longer than we're, you know, a lot of MCU cinematography you know it's very to the point and and kind of okay we we get the message let's move on you know they're they're often in a in a great hurry and this one like there are there are shots that last longer and and these pans and just like one of the first scenes is just the the hunters arriving at the mansion and there's this you know, very large, I guess it's it be referred to as a hall, of this mansion, and just, like, all of the most prominent of the monsters that have been killed, their heads are mounted on the walls. And, like, you know, I don't know, I think we see maybe, tw maybe 10 or 12 of them, and it's, like, 
we didn't need to see that many, but I'm kind of glad we did. Like, it just really gives you a sense. Like, this is not this is not their first rodeo. They've been doing this for a while. They are really good at it. And like, there's a point where where two of the hunters, you know, one of the one of the hunters is like, so uh, is that is that one of the ones you killed? And the guy's like, ah, I don't know. That guy, I didn't kill him, but I I fought him. You know, and it's just like. You know that that yeah, that's that's who these people are. You know they're like, if if this was if this was a story without monsters, you know this would either these would be like mounted like I guess deer heads or you know stuff like that, or like bowling trophies or something. Like they're just like hey, check it out. That that's mine. That's I. I did that, you know, when like, um, you mean you killed a living thing and tore its head off? Great. Back away slowly, you know, so that, that really tells you exactly who these people are and just, yeah. And that brings us to the editing, which was handled by someone whose name is not listed in the IMDb. There's an editorial department, but... Oh, hold on. Here we go. Editor. Jeffrey Ford. Who has also edited some other MCU stuff, including all three Captain America movies, all four Avengers movies, Iron Man 3, Spider-Man No Way Home, and Street Kings. So these are all very well-edited public enemies, too. Yeah. Tremendously talented. Shattered Glass, one-hour photo. Yeah, yeah. This okay, so Hide and, Se Hide and Seek is not a good movie, but the editing is on point. Yeah, the the, you know... Makes sense that they would give it to someone who has so much MCU experience. And, you know, he has handled multiple different tones over the course of these MCU movies. But yeah, actually, a number of these are some of the darker ones. So so that, yeah, makes, makes a lot of sense that he was... The, yeah, he does, he does a really, really great job. Let's see. Among other things, you know, some of some of it is the action, which it's you know, that's really really important for something that is part. Yeah, yeah. I said horror, comedy. Since it is the MCU, there is also the the action. I mean, really, so far, the only thing that you can't particularly that's MCU that you can't really say. Oh, that's at least partially action. Most of WandaVision and, you know, yeah, so far most of She-Hulk. So, yeah, not a surprise that it also has action. And the action is quite well edited. You know, some of it is very fast, but I was never lost. I was never confused as to where are the different people, creatures involved in this action scene what are they doing and why? You know, th those are things that, you know, if you want to make, like, a chaotic action scene, you know, shaky cam kind of, you know, sure. But this is not that. This is not trying to obfuscate and confuse us. And, yeah, like, I was, you know, yeah, there, there are times where the action is part, literally partially obscured. And... You know, those were, they they didn't play that as, you know, oh, it's, it's this, you know, yeah, those, it's not important that you know exactly what is going on. And the, let's see, so, yeah, the, the set design is absolutely amazing. You know, I already mentioned the, the massive hall. There's also this area that's like, it's walled in, but it is basically outside. And 
yeah, they're they're running around all these hunters looking for the monster and the the Yes, you, yeah, you really get the sense that this is... I'm not actually 100% sure when it is set. It might actually be set a, a bit back. Because on multiple occasions, you see, like, music being played from, like, old-timey LP record players. You know, not, not just... <sighs> yeah, you know, so, so that kind of implies that it is either it's set in the past or these are some real hipster just obnoxious anyway yeah so so yeah this this garden you legitimately get the sense that this this place it's old and we are way back in the past like possibly 1930s yeah i, th I think there's some chance and it's been there for a for an extremely long amount of time, you know, this, so basically, uh, like, the family is known for their monster hunting, they've been doing that for generations, and, yeah, you know, I, I don't know if they make money off of the monster kill, I guess, I mean, if, if I was, like, mayor or something, and someone showed up, with a cut off head of a monster and was like that's him right yeah i think i would throw money at them honestly if n if for absolutely no other reason to get them to stay far away until there's another monster attack so so yeah you know they have this massive mansion and just i mean realistically obviously it's a set you know a bunch of people got together and built this set, painted it and everything. But it looks like just an ancient, like, castle or fortress kind of thing. And just, yeah. That's not, like, honestly, if they wanted to do a prequel to this that's all about Ulysses. Yeah, I believe his name was Ulysses. I'm going to double check as a, where did I have that? Yes, Ulysses Bloodstone, you know, and, like, they could have, like, they could start in his youth, and, and, I, I, I guess I don't know if the, if he was the one who built up the castle, or what exactly, but, but, yeah, just, yeah, I, I suppose I should say, when I say they've been doing it for generations, I'm not 100% certain that it has been passed from generation to generation, what I mean is the amount of time. You know, it, I, I certainly get the sense that Ulysses was a young man when he started this, and, like, he is... I, I, I forget if we're told exactly how he died, but it's, we do see the body, and he doesn't look young anymore, so... And... So yeah, the, the action is really solid, very tense, very suspenseful, and it got more creative than I thought. Like, it, it, you know, again, it starts out with this concept of all these hunters against each other, and at first they have to find weapons. Like, the, the, so, so yeah, and yeah, you know, chases on foot, physical fights, use of superpowered items, and... And the weaponry is also, like, again, if this is not set far in the past, then, or far, you know, 1930s or something, then these are some real old-fashioned dudes, the, and, and a couple of gals, considering the, the choices that they, they make. I believe I saw, was that a musket? It, it, it certainly looked a lot like a musket, so, so yeah. And just... Yeah, the, the, and there's some great turns in the action scenes. Like, there were times where I really felt like, okay, I've, I'm not necessarily rooting for either of them, but I feel like I can see where this is going. Oh, nope, never mind, never mind. That, it's, yeah, and 
yeah, I guess I should briefly talk about the, the blood and gore. Again, like, they get sufficiently creative that it is, like, there's some really gnarly stuff in this, and I am not some rookie when it comes to gore. You know, the, the movie I... When I bring up gore, what I tend to point to is I love the 1982 movie The Thing and Cronenberg's The Fly and Videodrome and such. So it takes, you know, and I'm not saying this is quite those. That would be, there's no way they would be able to get that past for that, which is actually, yeah, I just saw where the, uh, did I click, oh, there we go. Upon the revealing of the special's content rating, director and composer Michael Giacchino expressed confusion for its TV-14 rating as he expected it to obtain a TV-MA. And among the many creative reasons behind the use of black and white filter in this film, the main purpose was to obscure the blood and gore in order to avoid a TV-MA rating. You know, so, so basically the only TV-MA thing in the MCU now is... Daredevil, and I guess we'll have to wait and see if anything else from the Defenders, from the Marvel Netflix, is acknowledged. But certainly, you know, yeah, Daredevil has showed up. I guess in case I, sh yeah, I'll I'll keep it vague in case you haven't got it. Yeah, Daredevil has shown up, and so has Kingpin. So, yeah. Now, but yeah, some, some really cool stuff, you know, blood spraying and like stuff that used to be part of a human body. By the end of this, it no longer is. It has been removed. And, yeah, so that brings us to the score and the, okay, so there is, there's not a specific, but there is a music department. Hmm. Is it... Yeah, so I can't find... Yeah, it, as far as I can tell, as far as I understand, it is Michael Giacchino who scored this. And, yeah, you know, if, unbelievably talented. He does such a good job. He's done a lot of great work for the MCU, or, or for, I should say, for comic book movies, I suppose. I'm not sure he's done that much specifically MCU, but... Yeah, you know, and he is really good at, like, he's a, he's a chameleon. He can make music for such different properties and make it work. You know, it never sounds like he's kind of out of his depth. And, yeah, like, the, the score here is great. Like, some, some of it is very operatic. You know, th this is kind of, you're either really going to love the style here, or you're going to be glad that this is not longer than it is. Because it definitely is not a subtle style. And, let's see, the, yeah, so the sound design is also great. Um... There's some really, really cool creature sounds and some of the some of the weapons. Obviously, in real, you know, it's just they're they're just props. You know, they're not actually dangerous, but they have to sound dangerous to sell them looking dangerous. And yeah, like there's some some great. Like, there, there were times where I practically ducked as, as some, you know, someone was swinging their weapon or similar. And, 
yeah, so this is 48 and a half minutes long without end credits, 54 minutes long with credits. But again, you know, once the credits start rolling, you can just turn it off if you feel like it. And, you know, yeah, I, you know, some critics say I wish it was an hour and 20 minutes, maybe even two hours. Actually, yeah, several have said they wished it, this was two hours. And, yeah, I, I, I do wish this was longer. I think... I don't know if they were worried that the black and white and period piece thing would uh, turn off people, and that's why they made this only be uh, a short. Because I, I do think, like, you know, if they had just made a feature film and either released it to theaters or sent it directly to Disney Plus, do not pass go, do not collect $200, then I I would say a bunch of people, you know, a lot of people would still have watched it and really loved it, but yeah, you know, they do do things on Disney Plus that they would not do in the movies. That brings us to the the best element of the movie, I would have to say it's the style. Like, this is really, like, I honestly... If... If Vincent Price were still alive today, I would like to think that he would be the one... He, he would either do the narration, or he would be voicing Ulysses. And, you know, I... Actually, I get. Do they do that a lot with actors' voices? I know they do it with faces. I mean, yeah, yeah, they have done it some with. And certainly Disney have done a little more Star Wars than MCU. MCU, it's mostly been de aging rather than resurrection. But yeah. I'm, I, I do. I am glad that they didn't. I, I don't particularly like that practice. And I mean, dude got to be in a Tim Burton movie before he died, which, you know, yeah, Tim Burton was ecstatic to be able to do that. This is where I'm supposed to point to a worst aspect. Um, I guess I would have liked for it to be longer. That's that's probably the only, but I don't I don't think it's a big deal. I mean, when when you when we talk about stuff being too short, like, I feel like, I like to try to make, make criticism mean something, like, I don't, I wouldn't really say that this is too short, I think it is the exact right length, if it was, like, three minutes shorter, I would be saying it's too short, I think it comes close to being too short. That's what I will say, and uh, yeah, you know the the it it's not the kind of thing where you're left afterwards and you're like that was way too, you know like <sighs> okay so I'm not claiming that Venom to Let There Be Carnage is a good movie, and I I suppose I'm not sure I would necessarily say that I wanted more of what I got. But if it had been a better movie, I would have liked for it to be long. You know, it felt like I sat down to watch the movie and, like, a minute later it was done. You know, because that movie is in such a rush. So, yeah, that movie is essentially too short. I... Th this was satisfying to me. I, I felt like I had been told a full story by the end of it. Rather than, you know, it, it didn't feel like, oh, wow, I guess they ran out of money and they couldn't quite finish it. And they just released what they had or something, you know. And, oh, right, this is, yeah, this is the part where I'm supposed to go into worst thing according to other people. There are not any user reviews on IMDb so far. Oh, right, there are some, yeah. I have not, yeah, there are. There are now 32 links to external reviews. I am not going to 
So I've, I read, let's see, what was it, five or six of them before watching, so. Anyway, uh, let's see, I guess I could look... Right, there's a yeah, meta... Let's see, so I'm gonna, yeah. Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes, where some of the critics had put in some. So, let's see. So the most negative of the right. So yeah, one. Hmm. Okay, yeah. So so a uh, let's see. One critic said that the you know the movie the the plot lacks in substance. That is true. It is you know just a. Yeah. So that brings us to. Okay, so what I was most worried about was probably that the. That the MCU, the, the demands of the MCU, of an MCU property, and this very specific style, which is not like. You know, some of these, yeah, some some of the expectations for movies have just changed so dramatically since the the thirties, you know, not not no big wonder, you know, the mummy is ninety years old the the movie. I forget how old the character of the mummy is canonically. But yeah. They they managed to find a you know this is not quite the 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 same you know but yeah they they did a, a really good job finding that happy medium and the thing I was most looking forward to was definitely the the style and yeah it was honestly if you don't care about the MCU at all. You could make this the one, th you you know the 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 exception, because you really don't like if you watch this and you don't know anything MCU, you're gonna be able to follow it perfectly fine. Yeah, if you if you just you really badly want to watch something that has this style, you know I mean I mean don't get Disney Plus just for this, but if you already have Disney Plus. Yeah, but yeah, this, this definitely you can you can sit down and watch this without knowing anything else, and I wouldn't rule out that some people might actually like watch this because they like horror or horror comedy, and then consider more MCU stuff afterwards. And I think that is probably part of the the reason because they could easily have just done like. I mean, they, yeah, this is the first, the, the MCU has been around for 14 years now. This is the first time they've done a Halloween special. Like, you know, for several years they released three movies each year. They could have made one of those be a horror, you know, a part horror movie. But, you know, so far they have not made one entire movie that is, you know, where horror is one of the main genres of it. So, yeah, you know, and, but, but yeah, this is like, I, I remember being a kid and like, you know, I watched all the other episodes of, Lu what was it called? Lu Lieutenant Dad, I think. I'm just gonna double check. Lieutenant Dad. I guess not. Um, Major Dad, I think, was what it was called. Yeah. Major Dad, the family-friendly sitcom running for four years. And, yeah, like, the, the, you know, yeah, it's, it's such a, it's, it's not, it's very non-threatening, 
but then there's the the I, I I'm not sure that they did more than one, but there's at least one Halloween special, and it's like, well, that's terrifying. You know, the, there's um, I forget if they did more than one, but Two and a Half Men did at least one Halloween special that was certainly scarier than the the usual episode, although your mileage may vary. I know people who find that show absolutely horrifying. You know, so, so yeah, the MCU, for, you know, a long time, very family-friendly, they've given us a proper Halloween special. Simpsons, also, you know, the, the, ah, uh, Treehouse of Horror. Now, the, on, oh, that was, there we go. So, yeah, currently... On Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 94% on the tomato meter, but only 49 reviews. So it is not certified fresh yet, but it is fresh. A spooky yarn told with taut economy, Werewolf by Night is a standout Marvel entry that proves Michael Giacchino as atmospheric and skilled a director as he is a composer. And 96% audience score, based on... Over a hundred ratings. The average rating is four point eight out of five. And skimming, yeah, the the um, oh, okay. There's a person here who thought it was boring. And let's see. And someone bothered to write that it left them feeling sick without writing why. I don't know. I guess maybe the gore. That that would be my first thought. But let's see. Yeah, most of most of the uh, user reviews currently on on Rotten Tomatoes are very positive. But yeah. And, yeah, so, that brings us to the Metacritic rating, which is 70 out of 100, based on 16 critic reviews. And, yeah, the special effects are quite good. Like, it looks like large, you know, a lot of it is CG, you know, that is their standby, but there does appear to be some that is practical, and it does really help sell it. And there's some really great stunt work. Some really cool fighting moves that, yeah. And that brings us to... Yes, so, the, yeah, I am giving this 10 full moons out of 10, and honestly, I wouldn't, I'm, I might watch this again later today, like, this was so much fun, yeah, and I think, yeah, and, you know, if, yeah, to, to give you an idea of how much our opinions, how much correlation, I'm gonna, I believe that is the right term here, how much correlation there is between my opinion and your opinion, I'm going to speed rush through, since by now there are many, my ranking from worst to best of all of the MCU movies. And keeping in mind, I love all of them. They're all amazing. I'm ranking how much I love them, not whether or not I love them all. Iron Man 2, The Dark World, Black Widow, Captain America 1, Thor 1, Ragnarok, Hulk, Ant-Man, Ant-Man 1, Ant-Man 2, Love and Thunder, Homecoming, Doctor Strange 1, 
Iron Man 3, Iron Man 1, The Avengers 1, Age of Ultron, Doctor Strange 2, Far From Home, No Way Home, Guardians of the Galaxy 1, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Black Panther, The Winter Soldier, Shang-Chi, Eternals, Civil War, Infinity War, and Endgame. And since this isn't a movie, I'm not going to put it in amongst those, but I guess I could... Yeah, it, it would be one of the one of the I guess if I had to yeah yeah I think it is I like it better than Winter Soldier not quite as much as Shang-Chi yeah I I am just gonna really quickly put it in here so so this is when I get into the spoilers and I'm just really quickly gonna note the time code there we go notes taken while watching so I'm yeah I'm just really briefly gonna quote you know one of my fellow critics said and I decided to save this until the spoilers so yeah I think you'll see why. I really love that they didn't show the werewolf until later in the movie, and interesting, unusual design. I agree, and I have to admit, I... Yeah, I think... Um, so yeah, like I mentioned, I haven't watched the classic... I guess it's called The Wolfman, isn't it? The 1941 Wolfman, which... If I look at the picture... Yeah, yeah. This werewolf looks a lot like the the classic Wolfman, and I do think that was a, a good choice. Let's see. Yeah, there, it, there is some resemblance to the 2010 Wolfman as well, but I would say it's closer to the 41 version, and yeah, I really, really like that, that choice. You know, if I if I want to be a, a total snob about it, my absolute favorite werewolf design is the kind you see in the game Nocturne, where it's not so much a wolf. It's not really that the that the you know in in this like size wise, it's essentially that he turns into like it's it's he still has roughly the same like height and and weight and such but there's hair all over his you know yeah all over his body in nocturne with you to be clear again i do love this design but yeah in nocturne it's basically that they turn into a bipedal wolf that is like because if you look if you compare the size of a human being to the size of a regular wolf a regular wolf isn't that impressive compared to like if you look at like a you know a, a full like a, a muscly grown-up dude you know so and yeah nocturne's like well if it turns into a wolf why would it get smaller no 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 it gets bigger you know so they basically look like if you know if Arnold Schwarzenegger fell into like a vat of sticky hair and then came out so, you know and and yeah bigger still acts actually i guess a better is maybe Dolph Lundgren because they are really really tall anyway so into my own notes i didn't want to i didn't want to give this away in the review itself i love the unique marvel logo here it is just pitch perfect the you know, like the the music and the black and white and the the scream and the the you know horror sound effects and such. And wasn't there like lightning strike? Just pitch perfect. Woe to the monster who finds himself among them. And the door opens all the way, revealing Jack, subtly planting the idea in our heads that maybe he is the monster. You know, just. 
yeah, absolutely. I love seeing all the hunters, all the different ones, and and just yeah, you just you immediately get a sense of who they just yeah. Like there's this one woman who doesn't say very much, and it, she's like dressed all in white and just yeah the the look on her face she is ready to kill and actually come to think of it yeah the I don't think the Asian had very many lines either and he's just such a bad like such a badass like love like it's such a clever choice of weapon he has a small crossbow on top of his hand so he can basically just aim with his hand and you know just yeah and I swear I would love that even if I wasn't probably a bigger fan than I should be of the original Deus Ex game but just yeah and and like when you know she she blocks off his hand with the door and he can just he can, you know he can he can turn and it's like I don't know how she's going to get, oh, shit, you know, and the hand falls to the ground, and it's like, yeah, dude, I think you should have accepted her closing the door. I think that would probably have been less painful in the long term for you, and she manages to, you know, grab the hand and use, and, and she doesn't, she doesn't take it off, you know, I I think she does eventually, but at first she just grabs the cut off hand and holds up and shoots and it got like goes through his neck and out the mouth and just wow and he's like lying there you, you hear these you know like gurgling as he's he's slowly suffocating and just to hold his his mouth so he doesn't give away their position because the the Scotsman has gotten that massive axe back like just Love it. And wow, the lot of tension between Elsa Bloodstone and Verusa. And we're told that Jack has over 100 kills. And, you know, for a while it's like, I mean, it sounded... It sounded ridiculous when some of them had like, what was it like, 50 kills, 70 kills, over 100 kills, and they're all like, "Holy, really? You you did that? You know this?" And and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. "What can I say? I guess I have a killer's touch," and just, you know, yeah. At at first, is you know, it's, it sounds kind of ridiculous. But then you see him in werewolf form, and it's like, so when you said over a hundred kills, did you mean like in a day or in total? Because, I mean, he said that he has it under control. I guess he must, because holy crap, the, 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 just, I mean, I don't know. Do we see him kill, I think at least 10 people, you know, a bunch of them are just, uh, red shirts. The the you know I, I remember when the trailers came out. You know some people were like, oh, they're like TV eight. No, they just didn't think of a different design for the yeah you know. But yeah, the guards for the house, TVA looking suckers. Yeah, they bunch of them you know and blood sprays on the camera lens and like just yeah. When I watched the trailer, I didn't think the thing in the coffin was an actual corpse. And uh, I mean, essentially, we're not really given an explanation. Like in in the trailer, it just kind of looks like, oh, you know, they did this like Chuck E. Cheese mascot thing, you know. But no, which I and I think I don't think this should ever be forgotten. Chuck E. Cheese is apparently just like. The, the fun name, but no, his full name is Charles Entertainment Cheese. And, and yeah, I mean, in on, on IMDb it says, you know, he has become an animated zombie-like being. 
and he's puppeteered by Eric Beck, which is just awesome. That's not CG. They built a puppet. They built a puppet that's supposed to be an old, you know, this guy who's like, so yeah, I mean, okay. I don't think he's a very effective zombie hunter anymore, but that doesn't mean he has to be like straight up dead. And he's, he still has the line, I'll be rotting for you. So he's dead. He's decomposing. But he can still, like, he likes a good pun. Who doesn't? He's. I hope I have his sense of humor when I'm dead and zombified and, and people show up to turn my funeral into a free-for-all, a, a battle royale. That is just... And I honestly, I think we should all... We should all hope to have that kind of, of grace in in our you know golden years when when we die that you know what let's let's make it a let's make it an event let's have some fun everybody tries to take out everybody else btw's there's a monster in the and and it is also like you know what like when when the when I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and call him Ted because apparently he still likes being called Ted. When Ted like grabs you know big monster hand around Jack's face, you know, at first it's like, oh, I, I mean, I thought he was the lead, but I guess this is where he dies. No, you know, it's uh, Ted. There's this, you know, oh you, and and the just. Yeah, when we when we see him do that, it's like he's misunderstood. He's not really a monster. People freak out because they they look at him and his appearance is very unusual. No, 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 no. He will melt your entire body with his bare hands, that B A R E hands, and just walk away. You know that that doesn't even, like. Wasn't at least one of the, I think he melted at least one person after the bloodstone was taken off him. I think it was maybe to, to provide an assist for Jack, which is also just like, I, Jack Russell, the werewolf. That is, that is such a, such a great, I, I guess his parents knew that that's what he was going to end up becoming. And yeah, the, the. You know, yeah, the the first guy, Ted, like melts the Scotsman's head, and you know, Elsa's like, Ted, and like his face goes with this really scary, to, and and he like he still growls and snarls, but it's like this low, like non-threatening kind of growl, and and just yeah, quality work. And Jack struggling with the timed grenade is genuinely amusing. Like he's a, so how do you how do you activate it? You know, and it starts beeping and and blinking and it's like, you know, and and then he goes over and he tries to like, just kind of attach it to the wall, which tells me. Someone making this, has been playing Deus Ex One because that is just straight up, like, even the it it. I guess it looks yeah yeah if Deus Ex 1 was set in night in the 1930s that is what the grenades would look like you know so yeah you you like twist it to turn it on and you can like stick it on walls you know and he it falls that okay run over pick it up and it's you know that was actually that was bordering on like Chaplin slapstick you know that is just yeah and manages to blow a, a huge hole in the wall. He grabbed it and it threw him back. Well, someone's quite the tattletale. And in the cage, Jack explains Elsa about his werewolf form and just yeah, I I really love the werewolf action, like the the bit where we we don't see him transforming we see the shadow and then we see her horrified face as she's like getting as far 
back up against the cell as at all possible. And like all the, you know, he jumps between them and rips out throats and just, yeah, really, really just like both cool and horrifying. And yeah, I mean, I think the idea is for him, Jack, to team up with Blade, which I mean, the time periods... Do werewolves age slower? I, f I forget. I, I used to know a lot about the the monsters, but yeah, I, I forget right now. But they certainly could do that. Uh, you know, it, it would be completely acceptable. There's a lot of undead beings that age extremely slowly. So, yeah. I really, really look forward to seeing him next to Mahershala Ali and just, like, kicking monster ass or the monster equivalent of ass. I, I really like that at the end, you know, somewhere over the rainbow plays and the image gains colors just like the Wizard of Oz. You know, I mean, I haven't actually watched that movie, but as far as I understand, somewhere over the rainbow, does she maybe sing that like bef right before or right after? You know, taking a trip to, to Oz. And yeah, you know, it's... Yeah, and I saw, I saw, it, there was a, let's see, there was a user review, the ending has color and my interest grew and saw how they look in color and they looked amazing, sucks it came at the end. I thought they looked great in black and white as well, and I'm not some, like, I don't think black and white is always better than color. I think for the movies where it was a creative decision, it really works. You know, the... Psycho, for example. But, you know, at the same time, I love the colors of the... Uh, I'm gonna really quickly find it so I get the year right. The Adventures of... Robin Hood from 1938 starring Errol Flynn uh, you know so yeah I, th I think it depends greatly on the honestly I think part of the reason might just be so that we don't freak out when we see Jack in color next time you know which is also like are they really gonna make a PG-13 vampire related I don't know I'm you know There's no way it'll be as bad as Morbius. So I I take comfort in that. And let's see. I guess that was... I'm just really quickly going to see if there's anything else that I wanted to say. Let's see. The, I talked about the music and the shadows and the... Yeah, I guess that is everything. So, let me know in the comments, you know, what is your favorite monster movie? Do you think they should have done something in this differently, or were you happy with how they handled it? Would you have, you know, do you think there should have been more gore, more horror? Do you think it was the right amount? Do you think it went overboard? And yeah, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell like you think it is a really evil monster hunter who's like just got no empathy for someone who clearly doesn't want to hurt people, even if they, yeah, okay, so he turns into a werewolf. There should be a link to my main channel page, one or more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested movie to watch on screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiled thoughts on a movie and one talking about my 
spoilerful thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus MCU show, which these days is She-Hulk, and one talking about my spoilerful thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus Star Wars show, which these days is Andor. And recently, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.